Circumcision for phimosis, balanitis, or cosmetic enhancement of the phallus. This is Jared J. Wallen, MD, board certified urologic surgeon, men's sexual health specialist. You can find me at mhurologytriad.org, at jjwurology at twitter.com, or Jared J. Wallen at facebook.com. Circumcisions can be performed for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, including hygiene and ease of cleaning. Uh, there also is associated decreased rate of STD, HIV, and possibly even penile cancer, uh, as well as a prevention of paraphimosis, which is essentially a situation where blood flow is cut off to the head of the penis due to a tight phimotic band. And finally, some patients for religious or possibly even cosmetic concerns. This picture depicts on the right side the uncircumcised phallus with the foreskin covering the glans penis. On the left side, the glans penis exposed after the foreskin is removed via a small procedure in the office. Essentially two incisions are made during this surgery. One is approximately one to two centimeters behind the head of the glans penis as you see on the left side of the screen. Uh, this incision is carried circumferentially around uh, the skin behind the head of the penis and then the second incision is made in the foreskin as the foreskin is covering the glans penis this incision is made in an area such that it is meant to match our other incision it is very important during this step that we put the penis on stretch to match the maximum length during erection to ensure that we do not short change the amount of skin remaining on the shaft of the penis. The morning of the procedure you should eat a light breakfast and drink approximately 20 ounces of water. You should take your normal medications unless you had planned previously to stop your blood thinners with me, your surgeon, and you should otherwise arrive approximately 45 minutes early with your ride. The initial portion of the procedure is to put the penis on stretch and evaluate the redundant foreskin to ensure that we keep enough shaft skin for when the penis is fully engorged with an erection. You can see my fingers there with the approximate amount of tissue I will remove and marking the areas where I will make incisions. Again, the first incision is made approximately two centimeters behind the head of the penis. The patient is fully numb and also has a muscle relaxer sedative on board. The incision is carried around the circumference of the penis. At this point, the underlying soft tissue called Dartos fascia is dissected carefully with electrocautery tools to ensure hemostasis and adequate removal of the tissue. We then make our second incision as the foreskin is pulled over the top of the glans penis. Again, we approximate this incision at the same area, approximately two centimeters behind the glans penis shadow, circumferentially around the penis.
As you can see, one of the benefits of having Dr. Wallen as your surgeon is that he is ambidextrous and able to use instruments in both hands fluidly. We then use a scissor to tunnel underneath the foreskin between the two incisions and connect them by opening up the foreskin and then sequentially remove the underlying soft tissue from the foreskin, removing it from the phallus. and the foreskin is completely released from the penile shaft tissue. We then irrigate and clean the wound bed and examine the cosmetic result while obtaining hemostasis of any minor bleeding underneath the skin. Reapproximation of the skin edges is performed with a dissolvable suture that dissolves approximately 7 to 10 days after your procedure. Sutures are placed circumferentially to cl completely close the skin incision.
penis is clean and dried and skin glue is applied to the head of the gland's penis. This is a post-procedural picture of the penis after removal of the foreskin and suture reapproximation of the skin tissues. The penis is then placed in a compressive and padded wrap and this should be left in place for approximately 48 hours. Post-procedural care includes a normal healthy diet, light duty activity, and non-vigorous activity for approximately two weeks, eight to 10 glasses of water daily, eight hours of sleep a night, and no alcohol intake for 24 hours. Incision care includes no masturbation, intercourse, or other friction-inducing activity until the skin incision is fully healed. You also should refrain from baths, pools, hot tubs, or soaking your penis in water during this time. When the sutures dissolve, you should typically apply Vaseline approximately three times daily until your incision has fully healed. Once the incision has fully healed, patients can return to all normal activities. Thank you for watching our video on circumcision for phimosis, balanitis, or cosmetic enhancement of the phallus. This is Jared J. Wallen, MD, board certified urologic surgeon and men's sexual health specialist. You can find me again at mhurologytriad.org, at jjwurology at twitter.com, or Jared J. Wallen at facebook.com. Thanks again for watching, folks. Have a great one.